guys, well, it's been a little while since I've made a video, so hopefully you guys are in the mood for one. Um, yeah. Um, probably gonna be looking at getting into some deeper, deeper thoughts here tonight, hopefully. Um, I just have a deep thought I want to talk about, and I'll just start talking and see where it goes. So, um, I have some ideas. Um, so I just got done, well, I was listening to this song, yeah, I was getting done listening to this song called Thrive by Switchfoot, and, um, I love how music is making an appearance in my videos, because music is such, uh, an important thing to me. It's been such an important thing to me in my life for a long time, and it's always made such a difference. But, at the same time, music is not my savior. Music cannot fix everything. It can make things better, but it can't fix everything. And so in other words, if you're relying on music to help you, help you get by, it's never quite gonna satisfy. Not really, not ultimately. Sorry for the bad news, but <laughs> it's actually good news, because God is the only one that's gonna really make things better, really change things. He's the one that's going to make the big difference in the long run. Putting your faith in him. Trusting him. But, um, this song Thrive is a very good song. Um, the main line in the song is, I want to thrive, not just survive. And it talks about, it's a very, it's a sad, it's a sad song. It's a very sad song. But you know, the thing I noticed um, this is very, I had a lot of big thoughts about this, it's a lot to, I don't even know where to begin to explain this thought, it's too big, it's just, I just have to start somewhere. Well, when I was living in Reno, and I was, um, married to my wife at the time, and, I uh, was going through, life was just like, life was just like, it was just whatever, you know, it was just like, it was all right, I guess. <laughs> and you know, sometimes it was, it wasn't, it was hard. You know, it was hard. I worked at night, uh, trying to maintain a relationship, thousands of miles from my family, um, and just trying to make life work, trying to do life, what I thought was life, and what I thought was the best I could do. And it was very, it wasn't, it wasn't very great. I mean, you know what I mean? It wasn't very awesome. It was just... It was just... It was just life. You know? And this song... It resonates hard with me. And I, I rec I, when I listen to this song now, I, I can't help but think, Dang. When I was listening to this song back then, why didn't I do anything about my life? Because... I was struggling. I, I needed so much more. And I just stayed where I was and stayed stuck. And the song is like the escape road. Why didn't the song register with me more to help me get out of there? And I got an answer. Um, and let, well, let me explain the song a little bit more to you guys so you have a better idea. Um, some of the lyrics are been fighting things that I can't see, and, like, voices calling from the inside of me, and sometimes I feel like I'm only a, basically like a ghost of me, or a shell, I, I, when I look in the mirror, it's like someone else is wearing my clothes, it says, the stranger in the mirror is wearing my clothes, no, I'm not alright, I know that I'm not right. A steering wheel doesn't mean you can drive. A warm body doesn't mean you're alive. It's such a good song. And the whole album is amazing too. Switchfoot, the song's called Vice Versus. The, no, the song, the album's called Vice Versa. Vice Versus. The song is called Thrive. But it's just such a deep, hard-hitting song. It's like, I want to thrive, not just survive. I want to thrive, not just survive. And like when I hear that song now it speaks to me then in my life and the reason why it didn't wake me up out of the matrix and like make me just want to eject myself out of my life at the time get into a better place or something like that was because of the Holy Ghost 
very interesting. I'm, I'm love, I, I love the fact that, yeah, I, I love the fact I'm getting this insight right now. It's so awesome. But like, but yeah, the reason why was because of the Holy Ghost. And, you know, it's something that became apparent to me when I was just thinking about all this a few minutes ago. The Holy Ghost was with me then. He's always been with me. And it's just, I think sometimes it's just a matter of how aware we are of Him. How aware we are of God. And now, it's a lot different now. Like, my life's a lot different now. I'm like, I'm aware of Him. I'm conscious of Him. I feel Him every day. I feel His presence in my life every day. Um, I can feel whether I'm closer to God or not. And things like that. And it's, it's wonderful. But, um... I realized the reason why I didn't make those changes then in my life when things were really hard or when they were really confusing and difficult, humdrum, blah, and just like, come on, I, I just wish I could do something better. I just really didn't have that feeling all the way. It took a long time for that feeling to grow. And it took a lot, a lot of time for it to grow big enough for me to do something about it. But at the time, I had that feeling, but it wasn't old enough yet. It was still a baby. And in the meantime, the Holy Spirit was like, you know what, Justin? No matter how hard things get, I am, I am right here with you. I am right here with you. And you know what? It's going to be okay. And that's what the Spirit was telling me. And I never really... I, I was never really that conscious of that, or never really, you know, I never really thought about that, I never really, like, knew that it was a spirit, but I was just, like, I just knew that deep down somehow, and, and it was, like, a belief I clinged to, and the spirit was there, and I know how much it was there, how much it was there, um, like, now when I think about it, it, it was there, but it was very, very quiet, still, small voice was there even in those times even in those times when I hadn't gone to church I had had premarital sex I was you know before my marriage after my marriage I was you know having premarital sex not not being married living with my girlfriend and then fiance and then afterwards and you know not going to church not having a church not going to church together with her not really, not really having, um, not really having a lot of a relationship with God, had my beliefs, but I didn't really spend much time with my relationship with God, exploring that, because I, I basically let my, my love, um, my relationship, I, I let that be my savior, or I talked myself in to believing that it was going to save me. That was enough for me. That was enough for me. And that was going to make me happy. And it was going to be plenty. But that's not how... That's not how those work. That's not how life works. Um, that's not really going to save us in the end. And... I'm just so thankful that even though I was not living right... God was still there with me. He was still in the midst of my storms. He was in the midst of my deserts. He was in the midst of my snow-covered, endless snow-covered field. Just without him on my mind. Just there. You know? And so it's it's just it's amazing because like it, it's so amazing. Life is so amazing. Things are so amazing. Like, it's so crazy. Let me just give you guys a tidbit for like you guys who are you know might be going through some stuff and it might be bothering you. It might be like you might be going through a struggle or something like that. You might be really going through a struggle right now. You know what? I'm gonna tell you something. Or you know what? Maybe something didn't quite work out. Maybe it didn't quite work out the way it was supposed to. You know the secret. Things always work out better than they were supposed to. And it's just a matter of time before we see that. Sometimes it takes a long time. I had something that didn't work out the way I thought it was going to work out. But you know what? However it works out, 
it's gonna work out so much better. And um, yeah, yeah, it's gonna work out so much better. I know that. I have seen it. I've seen lots of little things about that. I know more about it now. Um, I wasn't really ready for it at the time. And if I had gotten what I thought I wanted at the time, it wouldn't have worked. And I would have been missing out. There would have been so much more that I would be missing out on. And so I didn't get that thing at the time, just about a month or so ago, that I thought was coming. And you know what? is coming is even better and that's a hard thing for me to even imagine right now comprehend but it is so true because we are so not perfect and we make mistakes you know and when we're not ready for something we're not ready for something if you try to put the glove on and the glove doesn't fit the glove doesn't fit you can put it on but it might be too loose and fall off or you can try to force your hand in there and it's going to stretch it's not going to feel right it's right when you rip the glove it's like the cinderella shoe right it's going to go on the right person at the right time that's the way it works and i am so grateful things did not work out the way i thought they would i'm so grateful that things are working out the way that they are working out instead even though it's not what i wanted i mean I didn't know any better at the time. I, I couldn't have known about this. This is so much deeper and better, the things I'm going through now, than what I was hoping for. And those hopes were righteous, and they still are righteous. But what happened was, I thought I was ready for this wonderful thing. And I may have been ready, but... Well, actually, I wasn't ready. <laughs> I really wasn't ready, and I didn't get it. So much has opened, so much has opened, so much has happened, so much has opened up, um, and these experiences that are happening now are, they're amazing, they're helping me so much, they're, they're helping me, they're helping me to figure things out in a much different way than I expected. It's like instead of finding one person that was going to be my everything or my answer, instead, God has said no. You're not going to have that right now. Instead, I am going to show you more about yourself through other people. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you people in your life. They're going to meet you right where you are. And you're going to meet them where they are. And you guys are going to be right for each other, friends. And it's going to work out. And this is going to improve your life. This is going to help you. Instead of being upset or bitter or being like, man, this sucks, I'm being punished, I didn't get what I want. Um, I know it's not like that. It's like, no, this is actually what I need. Um, I met someone today. Um, well, I didn't meet them today, but I talked to them today for like the first time in depth. And it looks like we're going to be good friends. And yeah, yeah, I think, I think we're act I actually think we're going to be really good friends. And it, the future is so amazing, and there's, we just don't know what's going to happen and how it's going to un, unravel or how it's going to unfold. And I was talking to this girl, um, and in my class, she was in my class, and I talked to her afterwards, just making small talk. And I, I, the first time she came in there, I, knew, I noticed some things about her. I was like, what the heck is going on here? I just feel some things. I'm not sure what it is. I can't really put my finger on it. I almost felt kind of annoyed because I felt like she was annoyed at me. I felt like she was giving me like this cold, evil shoulder, like this cold, like, I don't know, aggressive, judgmental shoulder or something like that. And I don't think she was after all. And then like something happened and we started talking and I realized, oh yeah, she's actually pretty cool. And I could tell she was still pretty guarded or she at least came across to me that she was very guarded. And it made me unsure. I was like, what the heck is going on? And, like, I I have kind of a soft spot for aggressive women. Uh, aggressive females in general. I, you know, I think I'm... I, and I actually have that... I have that soft spot for, for certain men as well. Where I'm... I become vulnerable or I realize how I, f I realize I feel vulnerable 
in certain situations. And so I need, I don't need like love and cuddles and teddy bears all the time, you know, but I definitely need some, some sensitivity. Like I, I don't, and I can get along with like, okay, if you go into like the whole astrology thing, the different types of people, like water, water, air, earth, or fire, like I get down with earth signs pretty good. I think I get along with air and water pretty good. But fire signs are a little funny to me. And like sometimes people who are really fiery and they have like a little, they have like a lot of personality and they don't, they're, like, they're the kind of like, I'm just gonna tell you how it is. I don't care about your feelings. I'm just putting it out there. I, I get along with them to a certain extent, but sometimes it can rub me the wrong way. Um, but anyway, all that aside, I ended up talking to this person today and asking them questions, like small talk, like, like, hey, like, I'm asking you a real question right now, you know, what do you think about this? And she just started talking to me and it ended up, we ended up talking in the hallway for like an hour and a half. And you know, not only did we just talk for like an hour and a half, but I told her, she told me about going to church and I asked her what church she went to and she told me, and this is the cool part, I don't know if I'm going to explain this perfectly here, but this is the cool part, okay. How many times has this happened to you guys? Let me know if you can relate to this, because this is something I've noticed in my life and I am loving this. I am loving it. Um, how many times has someone talked to you about something? We're all different, by the way. We all function differently. But someone's talked to you about something, right? And they've asked you about something. And you're like, oh, you know, you know, you know, so-and-so place, right? Off of so-and-so road. And you're actually like, no, I don't. I don't really know that place. But you're thinking, you're listening to them. You're kind of like, you want to say yes. And they, and they, and it, it would be easier for them to continue if you just said yes. But you actually don't know where they're talking about. You kind of know what they're saying. You, you understand where they're going. You understand. But you don't know where they're talking about. And I have found that sometimes... Some, this is something I realized today. This is amazing. But um, times in my life where I've been in those kinds of conversations where I'm talking to someone, I'm a little bit outside my comfort zone, a little bit out of my familiarity zone, area familiarity, things like that. You ever get stuck talking to someone and you're like, man, I don't want to like be rude. And I don't want to like, I, I don't have any bad feelings toward you, but I really need to go. I really can't talk to you anymore right now. I, 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 I got to get out of this. I got to get out of this conversation. That's what I'm talking about. That feeling. You're like, I, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of this conversation and I need to get out of it right now. And hopefully it doesn't get to be that bad. Sometimes it gets like that, right? And it gets a little awkward, a little unusual, you know, to like get out of the conversation. Sometimes I've been in those conversations, and trust me, guys, I'm gonna loop back around to what we were talking about here, I promise. But um, sometimes you get in that spot where someone's talking to me and they're telling me about this stuff, and I'm like, oh man, I don't know what to do. I feel kind of, I, I feel like I need to be somewhere else. I feel like this isn't the best place for me. I feel like I am not really getting what I need in this conversation. I feel like I'm not shining my light the brightest. I feel like if my life had a personal unique dance to it I feel like I'm not really dancing that dance right now that feeling when you're in that spot and you feel like that you're like yeah I'm not really I'm not really I don't know I feel kind of like I feel kind of like lost or I feel kind of like um you know I feel like I need to like I said get out of this conversation or I feel like I'm not really this is not really where I belong it's a feeling of feeling like you don't really belong where you actually are there is a whole big truck parked here right on the road. And, it, oh man, it's so dangerous. It's got his lights out and everything. It's so dangerous. Um, well, I've been in those conversations that are awkward and hard to get out of. And you kind of feel like I don't, I mean, you start to feel like I don't really belong anymore. I feel like I gotta get out of here. I feel like, you kind of feel like this nudge. You feel like this pull. Like, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, you can't, you can't shut the person up. No offense to the person. You can't shut the person up. You can't be rude and like just leave or just like get out or whatever. You, you actually totally can, by the way. You actually totally can. You can leave anytime you want. You can just say something and tell them you gotta go or something like that. But anyway, I found myself in those spots before and been having a hard time to get out. And I know that God has thrown me escape ropes. 
promises connects to the person I was talking about, I promise. And, um, a lot of times those awkward, unusual conversations where I'm kind of stuck and feel like, man, I gotta get out of here or whatever. God throws me that escape rope. And, you, and sometimes it comes in the form of that person's talking about something, you're listening to them and you're going along with it, you're listening to what they're saying, you're like, yeah. Yeah, you're listening, you're like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, you remember that place down there? You know that place right down? And he starts describing this place to you, right? And you're like, oh, I don't know that place. I don't know that place. I realized today that that's, that's a chance to get out. That's a chance to get out of there. It's a chance to get out of the conversation. It's a clean break. You're cut free. You don't have to, you don't owe the person anything. You, you don't have to stay in there anymore. You can, you can, you can leave the conversation. You can say, no, I don't know that place. You know, hey, you know, I got to get going, you know, something like that, you know. But um, today, this is the cool part. Today, when I was talking to my friend, um, who I just, she became my friend today. But, oh my gosh, there's so many other cool things to talk about too. But um, related to her. To, to her. Um, but she was telling me about like, I said, hey, I don't want to take all your time, but you you said you go to church. What church do you go to? I'm just curious, you know. And she tells me, and the name of it, and uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, okay. This sounds pretty normal. This doesn't sound too out of the norm. Sounds pretty normal. And it's like, you know, is that in Easton? Is that in so and so? And she's like, yeah. And she sounded kind of surprised. But I was like, well, you need to call the Bible Church. Oh man, I just put some business out there. Sorry. I don't think anyone's. Worth it. It's not really going to matter that much. It's just a church name. Anyway, I'm thinking, well, of course that's in so-and-so town, right? And, um, and then she starts describing where it's at. And she's like, oh, it's right down, it's, it's off of this road. And I'm thinking, as soon as she starts explaining, I know exactly, I, I, I know, I know in my mind, it starts filling in the knowledge, the knowing about where this church is, which church this is, and where it's at, starts filling in. And she's like, it's just off this road. It's down this road. It passed this place. And I'm thinking, like, yes, yes, yes. I know exactly where you're talking about. Anyway, my point in all this long story is there's times I feel where sometimes you're not quite meant to be there. You're not quite, not quite the right place. Other times it is. And I just like that contrast of when sometimes you're in an awkward conversation to ask you about this place and you don't know. And why don't you know? Maybe because you shouldn't, maybe because you're not meant to know, and maybe you're not meant to know because you don't, you don't need to know, and maybe it all lines up to saying that you don't really have to be in this conversation, and then on the other hand, when you're talking to someone, it's not an awkward conversation, and the conversation's going good, and you like it, and they ask you about this place, do you know about this place, and then you say, yeah, you do, because you do. It's just such a good feeling. It's such a cool feeling. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's just awesome, you know? And so, um, it was a really good experience today, long story short. And it was my makeup video, kind of, I guess, it's not really a makeup video. It's just like, you know, I haven't made a video in a while. And it, it's nice to be here, and it's nice to, to talk to you guys again and share some more things about what's been going on lately but like yeah I met a friend like things have been happening things have been changing I have just noticed this things have things have been changing for me lately at school like I felt some pretty hard emotions I felt some kind of Debbie Downer moments for a while like today and like they lasted a while and like it's not the first day I felt it and like been confused I realized I've been dealing with a lot of heavy emotions and not really realizing it you know and just things have been just but there's just been some really good things that have been happening, is what I'm saying. And turns out, I talked to this girl, and she's super cool, and she's like, where do I know you from? She just tells me that today. I'm like, dude, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. And, um, you know, now I'm like the pre-mortal realm. Like, <laughs> but, you know, um, it's just so funny. And I don't know, we had the craziest long talk. And not only did we have a long talk, and we talked about church, I got to share my testimony with her. I had to tell her about what Latter-day Saints believe. And it was amazing. I got to tell her a lot. She asked questions, and she was cool. 
She wasn't judgmental. She was honest. She was chill. She was laid back. It was awesome. It was awesome. And so I'm super excited. I added her on Facebook. And, you know, I'm stoked. I now have a legit friend in my class. I am stoked about that. Like, I don't know a lot of people in school. I have one. I have two friends that go there. That I know. But I don't have any classes with them. Now I have a legit friend. Like, a legit friend. Like, this is super cool. I'm super excited. Like, I found a lot, I found a lot of really cool things. I, I have found a lot of really cool things while I've been in school that have been God. God's work, his details, you know. I have found the blessings he's given me, he's put in, this, in store for me in, in school and places. I've seen it. I've seen these blessings. I, I know God is real. I know God's real. There's no question. But, like, I know God is real. I know that he's blessing me. I know that he's putting these things in my path. I know that he's blessing me with people. I know he's blessing me with these assignments. I get to choose a research topic, and it's going to be a really powerful topic. And my teacher gets it. She gets it. She's so cool. And she gets it. And she's like, I'm not like sitting here trying to talk to her about something. And I also want to talk to her about this other thing. And she's like, hey, so I wanted to talk to you about this other thing. I'm like, yeah, okay, let's go. It's just so awesome. Like so many great things. So many great things have been happening. It is amazing. I feel more and more. I feel like a veteran at school already. So I'm already, it's only like week four. I feel like an old dog on campus. I feel like, man, I've been here for so long now. I'm comfortable now. I feel like you could ask me anything. <laughs> and I haven't even been here long. I'm like a noob still. But, you know, I'm also, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm not. Yeah, but I'm, it's just interesting. A lot of interesting, cool things. So, I hope things are going good for you guys. I hope that um, some of this triggered things in you. Good things. I hope it is made you think about the good things that have been going on in your life, the good things that have been happening, and if, if those good things aren't happening, I know they will happen, so you just keep on going, you keep on doing the things you know are right, and these good things, the good things will happen, just keep doing what's right, right, keep up the good work, and good things will happen, so don't give up, don't give up, the moon's not full, but it's pretty bright, tonight. As you can see, the sky is lit up pretty, pretty brightly. That is a pretty bright moon, is it not? That is a pretty bright moon. And it's not a full moon. It's pretty awesome. But anyway, thank you guys for watching and listening. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say right now. I think it's time to cut this video short. Because I could talk and go on more, but, you know, I really said what I needed to say here. So... I will talk to you all later. Stay positive. Stay focused on God. Stay focused on Christ. Try to be more like Him. Try to be more Christ-like. That is what I need to do more of. So I am trying. I am trying to do that. But we could all benefit from that for sure. So talk to you soon.